This video will be for the wave particle duality questions in modern physics and for the energy level questions. So here's the wave particle duality worksheet for A plus physics. Here's page two of that, page three of that guy. I think there are four pages in this first one. Uh, yep, there's that guy. And then we have the energy levels guy. There's page one. Here's page two, three, four, five, six is a good number of pages on this one. And that was six uh, pages for that one. And here's our reference table. We'll need this page for its constants. We'll need this page probably for the spectrum. We'll need page three for the energy level diagrams for sure. Don't think we need page four, it's all electricity. Uh, we'll need page five for the modern physics and maybe also the waves equations. And good old mechanics, we took half the year for that, but I'm not sure we're going to need it now. So. Those are the documents that we may need. So we'll start with number two on the wave particle duality worksheet. So the question number two says, exposure to UV radiation can damage skin. Exposure to visible light does not damage skin. State one possible reason for this difference. Um, they're probably looking for the most obvious reason and it has everything to do with how energy is directly proportional to frequency. The energy of a photon is directly proportional to its frequency. And so ultraviolet light, and not all UV, but what we call hard or high frequency ultraviolet, or uh, also called short wave as opposed to long wave, um, short wavelength, high frequency ultraviolet light has enough energy to damage skin. And the reason why, I mean, you can just be like, oh, high frequency, high energy. And you're like, yeah, but why that? Why ultraviolet? Um, why also not all ultraviolet, like black lights at a party or black light bowling or something like that, those black lights do not damage skin. But other black lights, if you go into a tanning bed, they do damage skin. And it's like, what's the difference? Well, tanning bed black lights have a higher frequency than the black lights you would find at black light bowling or at a black light party or just like the regular old black lights you can like buy at Home Depot. Um, and the reason why it actually has to do with E photon is EIM minus EF. Um, and that EF being like the final level, if, you're, if your photon energy is in the high frequency ultraviolet for most um, atoms, I think maybe all atoms, um, it does not matter where the electron starts. If the photon is high frequency ultraviolet that, uh, and the electron absorbs that photon, that is enough energy to not just bump it up energy levels, it's enough energy to have it leave, go all the way up and be ionized. And if you ionize the atom, you're like, okay, so you're ionizing the atom, how is that damage? Well, it's damaged because what, what was once a neutral atom is now ionized, it's now electrically charged. And since it's electrically charged, that electrostatic force can alter the structure of the molecular structure of DNA. Um, they call them free radicals. Um, and those ions in the, um, those like, atomic ions can mess with the structure of DNA. And if you mess up DNA, well, that can cause cancer. Um, doesn't cause cancer all the time. Um, and, uh, and your skin does have its own defenses. That's why you get a tan because you what your skin is really doing is being like, um, Hey, there's like damage here and we're trying to protect and so people are like, oh, your tan looks so good. Or in other words, it's like, oh, you exposed your skin to damaging radiation and your skin's kind of crying in response with its tan. You look great. <laughs> so, you know, that's food for thought. Um, and uh, so tan, tans are all well and good. You know, it's normal. But to tan too often and cause skin damage is not great, especially when skin cancer frequently doesn't show up for many years um, so sunblock is a thing for a reason. You definitely want to consider that. Um, but yeah, so uh, in the end, 
um, high frequency, the higher the frequency, the higher the energy, because energy and frequency are, are directly proportional. But that short wave high frequency ultraviolet um, is enough to ionize atoms. And so that's specifically why. But there you go. It's a long answer for that question. But really what it boils down to is this principle right here, the fact that energy and frequency are directly proportional. Just as a side note, um, this is also why x-rays, you want to um, minimize your exposure to x-rays, definitely minimize your exposure to gamma rays, but those are rare. Um, they come from space sources and nuclear power plants, and then nuclear power plant employees are watched very carefully. Um, they have monitors and sensors uh, to watch their exposure to gamma rays. Um, but you see, you might see a lot of stuff online about like 5G and cell phone radiation and how it's radiation and it's bad for you. That's low frequency. That's even lower frequency than visible light. Visible light has no effect on you and neither does, um, neither do radio waves. If people are so worried about cell phones and, um, and, uh, radio wave transmissions affecting their health, then maybe they shouldn't sit in, in areas that are, washed over with Wi-Fi um, because we are exposing ourselves to Wi-Fi on the regular. If it was bad for our health, then we would be screwed, uh, but it's not. Um, the radio waves are very low frequencies, so they're low energy and they're non-ionizing. You could argue like, like, well, what about microwaves? Microwaves is a different story. Um, the frequency of microwave radiation is the resonant frequency of water, um, and that's a resonance thing. That's not an E equals HF thing. Um, and uh, thankfully, radio waves are not at the resonant frequency of anything living, so radio waves are not going to mess up um, people like, you know, as if like, like microwave cooking water. Um, so there you go. Wow, a winner is me. Um, once again, I assigned a problem that actually required the answer to the previous problem. So to do number four, you actually have to solve for number three. That's my bad, I apologize. Let's switch that up and take a look at three first. Um, then we can do four, and three actually uses an equation that they give to you, and that's that the wavelength, the de Broglie wavelength of a particle is Planck's constant divided by the mass times the speed of the particle. So there we go, we just used the equation they gave us in the problem. They gave us the mass, they gave us the speed. We know that Planck's constant is 6.63 times 10 to the negative 34 joule seconds, page one of the reference table. Solve that out and get 4.95 times 10 to the negative 14 meters for that wavelength. Then number four says, is the same order of magnitude as which type of electromagnetic radiation? So we're gonna have to uh, um, check the reference table, page two, we're gonna have to look at the spectrum. Typically, I ask you to solve for the frequency first, um, but we don't really have to here because we're just looking for order of magnitude or power of 10. Order of magnitude means power of 10. Um, but let's just solve for the frequency anyway because it really is the way you should be using the electromagnetic spectrum. So I got a frequency of 6.06 .06 times 10 to the 21 hertz. So wavelength is 10 to the negative 14. Uh, frequency is about 10 to the 21 or 10 to the 22. Let's go look at the chart. Okay, here we are, page two of the reference tables, and it says that the uh, wavelength is um, in the 10 to the negative 14, so that's all the way over here, and then the frequency uh, as well. I, um, yeah, the frequency was 6 times 10 to the 21, so that's going to put us right about here. That agrees. Um, so that's all the way at the top edge of the uh, spectrum. That's going to going to be gamma rays. Again, just to repeat, when they say order of magnitude, they mean power of 10. Okay, number eight is pretty straightforward. They give you the wavelength and they want the energy. E equals HC over lambda. Go. Here we have it, 4.0 times 10 to the negative 19 joules. Two sig figs because there were two sig figs on the wavelength. Nine. Nine gives a frequency. They want to know what is uh, what type of light it is, so we consult our electromagnetic spectrum. So we have two times ten to the ten hertz. So I go on the frequency on the bottom. I find ten to the ten. It's just a little bit more than that. 
So I would say it is microwaves because radio waves pretty much goes up to 10 to the 10, but it stops there. And uh, besides, radio waves are not a choice. So microwave is your choice, is your answer. Number 10, another quick one. Energy of a photon is inversely proportional to wavelength. I forgot to write the actual answers to eight and nine. That would be three and three. But number 10 is choice one, wavelength. Okay, number 12, we have a chart, five different photons, five different energies, five different frequencies. And so it says, which part of the EM spectrum would photon D be found? So we look at the frequency, it's 2 times 10 to the 13 hertz. One more electromagnetic spectrum reference. That would be 2 times 10 to the 13 for photon D. That puts us right here, and that makes it an infrared photon. 13 shows an energy versus frequency graph, and it wants to know what would the slope be. Well, I know that the the energy is in, is directly proportional to frequency. We have E equals H F. And so E and F are directly proportional. And that constant of proportionality is the Planck's constant H. So there are two ways of looking at slope. You could match up the equation to the equation of a line. Y equals slope x, where the y-axis is the energy, and the x-axis is the slope, I'm sorry, is the, is the frequency, and so the slope would be Planck's constant h. Another way of looking at it, slope is rise over run, so if we rewrite e equals hf, so that we have e over f, like if we divide both sides by f to get e over f, then that E over F, that slope would be Planck's constant H. So that slope, the slope of that line, the physical significance of the slope, as they say, is Planck's constant H, which we know as 6.63 times 10 to the negative 34 joule seconds. Next question. So for 14, they're talking about the Balmer series of hydrogen has light with a wavelength of 6.56 times 10 to the negative 7 meters. It wants the frequency, so we can do V equals F lambda, where V is the speed of light uh, in vacuum. Um, I guess we can assume this is in space or something. Uh, so we we'll use C for V. And it seems that we run out of room on the bottom of this page. We'll squeeze it on the right. 4.57 times 10 to the 14 hertz is our frequency. 15 wants the energy in joules. I can use the frequency I just found, um, but why not use my original wavelength and do E equals HC over lambda? I feel like E equals HF is used more often, so let's do the E equals HC over lambda. Take the path less traveled. So, <clears throat> yeah, given the wavelength, we do E equals HC over lambda. We get 3.03 .03 times 10 to the negative 19 joules. 16 wants to know, uh, find the energy in electron volts, so convert to electron volts. And that comes to 1.9 EVs. I think they're going for 1.89. I got 1.895, so I rounded. All right, number 17 wants to know which phenomenon proves that light has a wave nature. So if you're looking for a wave nature, which phenomenon shows a wave nature, why don't you pick a wave phenomenon? So, emission of light from an energy level transition, I don't know that that's a wave phenomenon per se, diffraction of light, ooh, that sounds familiar, maybe that's it. Absorption of light by a black sheet of paper, um, that can happen to wave energy, but that's not unique to waves. And reflection of light from a mirror, and you might be like, oh yeah, waves reflect, but a lot of things reflect. Um, a handball can reflect off of a wall when it bounces, um, or a pool ball can re uh reflect off of a rail. I don't know, that's not a wave thing. That's a particle thing. So what's unique to waves in this set is diffraction. Only waves diffract. Um, and that, I mentioned a while ago, that, that two-slit experiment that we looked at in the interference lab, um, that was proof that wave can diffract, uh, light can diffract, only waves diffract, and so light therefore can act like a wave. So 17 is two. 
And so I picked diffraction for two reasons. One, because we know that diffraction is a wave phenomenon, but diffraction only happens with waves. It does not happen with particles. If you throw a baseball through an opening about the size of the baseball, it's not going to suddenly change direction and wrap around the opening. That makes no sense because uh, particles don't do that. Um, not large ones anyway. I mean, I, I probably should take that back because electrons do have de Broglie wavelengths and electrons can diffract, but ugh, whatever. It, it's diffraction. Let's just move on. I definitely get the feeling this is going to be another two video situation. Uh, one for wave particle duality and another for energy levels. But anyway, number 19 says, which graph represents energy versus frequency? Oh, this one's easy. They're directly proportional. E equals HF. It's choice three. 20. Light demonstrates both. That's they call it wave particle duality for a reason in both the characteristics of waves and particles. Light acts like a wave when it does things like diffract, but light acts like a particle. A good example of that actually is a solar cell. When light hits a uh, what they call a photovoltaic cell or like a solar cell you'll put on your roof, um, that those light photons are literally smashing into the electrons, causing them to move as if they were billiard balls hitting each other on a pool table. Um, so light does uh, demonstrate characteristics of both particles and waves, and particles do the same, uh, like electrons. They exhibit properties of particles, because they are particles, but also waves. Um, electrons can diffract. That's how they figure out um, crystal, uh, like if you have a crystal structure, it's like, how do they know how the crystals are aligned? because they shine electrons through it, and the electrons get diffracted by the structure of the crystal, make a diffraction pattern behind it. Um, it's, it's neat. Um, and, uh, but anyway, so 20 is both. Choice three. 26, all photons in vacuum are the same what? Let's not forget that photon is light. All light in vacuum has the same speed. Three times 10 to the eight meters per second, choice one. 27, which, which phenomenon supports the theory that matter has a wave nature? Wave nature, pick the thing that is unique to uh, waves. So we have momentum and diffraction. Diffraction is a wave thing. So you could just be like, oh yeah, choice four, photon diffraction. Hold on a second, read carefully. It says that matter has a wave nature. Photon is not matter, photon is a light. We want electron diffraction. Electron is matter, it's a particle, but electrons do diffract because they have a wavelength. They have a de Broglie wavelength um, and they can diffract around very small objects. So 27 is two, electron diffraction. Just as a side note, you can be like, well, electrons can diffract, but what about larger things? What about baseballs and cars and jet planes and spaceships? And like, do they have a de Broglie wavelength? Actually they do, but it's very, very large objects. Their de Broglie wavelength is just like immeasurably small. Um, it has like literally no effect. So can you diffract an electron? For sure. Can you diffract a baseball? Uh, no. So 29 is interesting. They give the energy and what the frequency. You work backwards. It's still E equals HF, not really a big deal. 4.52, so 10 to the 14 hertz. Next. And last but not least, we saw this before with energy versus frequency, and now it's energy versus wavelength. Energy and wavelength are inversely proportional. Anything that's inversely proportional follows the hyperbolic curve shown in choice one. All right, well, we have like about like a 11 minutes left in this video, but we have 24 questions on the energy levels worksheet and uh, that's going to involve flipping back to the energy levels and all that jazz. So I'm going to do that in a separate video and um, I should maybe talk faster like this. I should go really fast and refer to the energy level diagram of hydrogen and all of that stuff and we'll see how well that goes. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I'm not going to fit it in here, that's for sure. And I don't want to start it and then be like halfway through and you'd be like, whoops, at a time. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to make a second video for that worksheet. Um, so this is one of two and stay tuned for two of two. And I, <clears throat> I always end videos with a little picture. Um, let's see if I can draw a very fast flag. Very 
it's supposed to be 50 stars in there. And let's see. Oh, that, it's in a blue field. Wow. Do I not know my American flag? Great chirp. And this flag is not working out too great. Here we go. Oh, it's as good as it gets. You get the idea. Let's see. Um, is the top stripe red? I should probably check that out. I think you get the idea. Um, it's the flag of our country. But I put it down um, because it's Memorial Day. And uh, a lot of people are like, oh, three-day weekend, yeah, shoot up fireworks. And let's, like, honestly, let's not forget um, what we are remembering. And uh, it's soldiers who have given up their lives for our country. Um, and it's, uh, and there's, like, you know, a, a bunch of people very much support Memorial Day. And I do, too, absolutely. I mean, my uh, my uncle, um, rest his soul, was uh, was was shot down over Vietnam and he lost his life. Um, and, uh, but it's the kind of thing, you know, it's like some people join the military of their own accord and are super patriotic and they, you know, love American ideals and that's beautiful. Um, and then there are people say in Vietnam who were drafted and didn't really want to go and didn't really know what they were fighting for. Um, but people have different points of view on that. But I, I think the net takeaway is that it's, uh, it's super serious and it's super important um, and, you know, whenever we have like a military engagement, um, and that's why I tell people that voting, it doesn't matter who you vote for, but just the simple act of voting is just so ridiculously important. Um, even, you know, they, they keep track of how many people vote and who votes, um, not how you vote. That's super illegal, like how you vote, but whether or not you vote, um, is not illegal at all. And man, do they follow that? They keep track of it. And um, and politicians, that's how they stay in, in their jobs, is who votes for them. And so they pay attention to who's voting. Um, again, not necessarily how they're voting, but who shows up. And it's just so important because, um, I mean, we're, we're, we're a democracy, and so much depends on, um, on, on people voting, you know. And, uh, and especially, you know, on Memorial Day, you know, it's, we talk about how soldiers died and, and sometimes for excellent reasons and sometimes for terrible and very stupid reasons. And, you know, what are the good reasons? What are the bad reasons? Man, you could argue that to death. But point being is that it was always important. It was never trivial. And, uh, and you know, the people that made those decisions were not the soldiers themselves. They just followed orders. It was the politicians that made those decisions for better and for worse. Um, which is why, you know, voting uh, for whoever you like, um, and no matter what you think, or no matter what your political position is, or who you support, or which party, or whatever, it's the beautiful thing about our country is that people could, you know, like get into a fist fight over which political party to support. But every single person um, who is registered to vote and is able to vote um, can vote, and man, you should vote. Like, seriously, um, even if you show up and write in, you know, it's like, uh, like Mr. Hessel, you know, for president, like, God forbid, but <laughs> I would not want that job, but you could even do a write in or whatever, but, um, but show up, you know, when, when you're able, um, and, and tell your, your folks that they should vote. Um, and, and the more local the vote is, the more important it is. Uh, the more your vote matters, things like the you know the school budget, you know, and school board members and local politicians, you know, even people like you know town of Hempstead uh, politicians, and I think you know right yeah Rockville Center has their own politicians. Um, it's it's like I think I made my point. Um, it's super important to vote. It doesn't matter how you vote. You know, I'm not going to tell you how you should vote, but I will tell you. Uh, get your behind out and vote when you can, and your folks should vote when they can. Um, it's very important. And uh, so, yeah. All right. I got five minutes left in 
five seconds from now. I got five minutes left right now. Oops, nope, there, right there. And, uh, and I'll leave you with that. So stay tuned for uh, number two, video two, um, where I go over the energy levels, modern physics energy levels worksheet. All right, bye.